Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. APIs are the backbone of the internet. Wherever or whatever you see on the internet, mostly it is driven by APIs. What is an API? API is an application programming interface which allows to connect to the different components of the system. So if there are multiple components and if you want to interact with them, API is used to interact with those components. So as it is widely used, there are a lot of different architectures available to implement your APIs. So let's understand few of the top used API architectures in the industry. The first one is the SOAP. SOAP is the OG of the API architectures. So SOAP is highly used in the financials and payment gateways. Wherever there is a requirement of high reliability and security at that time SOAP is used. SOAP mainly works on the XML based data. So if you see there are servers to communicate between the servers SOAP is been used. SOAP is an architecture and all the data has been processed using the XML. There is a good amount of learning curve as well when you want to work with the SOAP and whenever you are working with very lightweight applications at that time SOAP is not useful that much because itself SOAP is very verbose to implement as well. So this is about the SOAP. The next is the REST. So REST API is used widely within the industry. So most of the applications that you see today mostly works on the REST APIs. Be it example of GitHub, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you see, mostly they have been implemented using the REST APIs. How REST API works? REST API have a resource and with those resources, with HTTP calls, all those data is been passed and fetched. So there is a client and there is a server and client or server can get the data from the other server using the resources that has been defined to fetch the data and those calls will be done using the HTTP and this is widely used and easy to learn as well. The next is the GraphQL. This is not just the architecture but also a query language. So whenever you want to get any data you can define the query model and with the queries you can fetch the data. So whatever the data you want to get that particular query you can define and accordingly you will get the data. So with this you won't be suffering with underfetching or overfetching the data. This was been designed by Facebook and it was open source and currently there are many companies which use the GraphQL in their tech stack. So if you see there, there are clients and servers and whenever any client wants to get any data from the server there is a query model defined and to get the data from those query models we have to define queries like this all particular fields I want and accordingly the functions will be defined and those functions will involve on those data model and it will fetch the data for you. So it will be like uh, different clients can get different data based on how the queries are been defined. Suppose I want only first name last name you can define that and I can get the data of an employee from the employee queries or employee model accordingly. If I just want first name last name email ID and phone number accordingly we can get the data. So this is just the example basic example that I'm giving you just for you to understand how this will work. We can understand about the GraphQL. I will try to implement a dedicated video on that as well. But this is how generally the GraphQL will work. The next is the gRPC. gRPC mainly works over the direct network and it is highly used in the microservices architecture and the data passed between the network within the gRPC is using the proto buffers. So this was earlier developed by Google. So that's why it's called gRPC. RPC. RPC stands for remote procedure calls. So you will be doing those calls to get and fetch the data. This has a very steep learning curve but this is very efficient as well when you are working with the microservices. So within that architecture this has been highly used. The next is the WebSocket. So whenever you want to have a bi-directional communication and a bi-directional data fetching or data pushing at that time we use WebSocket. So WebSocket allow us to send the data and get the data at any interval. It will be creating a connection so that connection will be open until and unless we are sending the data. The basic example I can give you is like your uh, taxi hailing application right. So what it will do is it will create a WebSocket connection so every second every interval you will get the exact location of your taxi like where it is coming and where it is going right. So it is a constant push and pulling of the data using the bi-directional network. So in those scenarios WebSocket has been used. The next is the webhook. Webhook is used when you want 
to have the asynchronous communication this type of communication uh, you can see in the github as well right so whenever you want to do any action based on something is performed at that time we'll be using the webhooks so whenever you're doing a get push right in the get at that time an asynchronous task has been performed right at that time this webhook has been used so whenever you're doing a commit in your git in your repository you want to start your ci cd pipeline right so at that time you will define a webhooks and with that webhooks it will continuously start pulling the data is there any change or not and whenever it finds any change whatever webhook we have defined accordingly it will start the asynchronous processing so these are the different architecture patterns widely used within the industry but there are many more others as well so we have just talked about the top six here there are many others as well so this was a quick video about the top six architecture design patterns for the api if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos you can also click on the join button to join my channel and support me i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye